These images show the destruction along a street in Khartoum as people began venturing out in hopes of finding food or escaping the violence. Gunfire and explosions were heard Tuesday in the Sudanese capital, despite a 72-hour ceasefire brokered by the U.S. and agreed to by the Sudanese army and the paramilitary rapid support forces. It was supposed to be the first day of the ceasefire that was declared yesterday, but the ceasefire was broken today. Meanwhile, nations continued to evacuate foreign nationals from Sudan on Tuesday, including Greece, France, India and Britain, which launched what it called a large-scale evacuation of its citizens from the country. So the situation remains dangerous, volatile and unpredictable, and we're calling people forward uh, in priority order based on their vulnerability. Millions of Sudanese people have been trapped inside their homes since the fighting began more than a week and a half ago, many without food or electricity. But some have been able to escape the capital, like this woman who fled with her family after their house was hit by a missile. And the missile didn't go off, it just went through the roof and it's just, we think it's still there in the house. So that became no longer a safe option. We had to move out. Here, I'm in Port Sudan. We got here yesterday afternoon after a nearly 26, 28 hour bus trip. It's a blessing to be here. So we're thankful for that. The UN says that almost 500 people have been killed and more than 4,000 wounded since the fighting broke out. And with many hospitals closed, the healthcare system in the country is on the verge of collapse.